é cansa muito linda. Então, é, 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 é canção de Banda Eva? Isso, da Ivete. Original? Não, essa não é original. A original é da Ivete. Elas Sim. fizeram um, rem um remake. Na, numa, porque é mais, é mais acelerada a música, o ritmo né, do axé. Elas fizeram MPB. Ó, oh, Machadinho. Hello, people. Welcome to... So I'll show you how small this is. I mean, let me uh, compare it to maybe a fixed blade. Uh, so compare it to, you know, this UST, these little mini hatchets that, that everyone makes. As you can see, it's even smaller than that. Very, very small. Uh, Kydex sheath. All all edges are convex grind. You may sharpen that basically to be used as a knife and uh, as a mini hatchet. Very thick stock, but lots of weight relief. Uh, I don't know if that hole is meant to be anything. Um, I suppose it could be. I don't know. Anyway, uh, but. Uh, Very, very EDCable. Let me see if I can find a uh, comparison. Um, here's the Spider Co. Spider Co. I love the Spider Co. There's the smock. Smock. So that, that's how small it is, as you can see. Maybe I'll get the. If I can find my PM2, I don't know where it is. Oops. Oh, I know where it is. Here it is against the mass drop pro tech. Uh, what do you call this? The um, the Mordax. So I mean. That's EDCable. If that's in your pocket, you know, so this is put this way. So I guess it's meant to be like scout carried. Once again, um, hey, Alex. Hey, Alex. I am Oyosai. Oh my God. Uh, I don't know where my PM2 is. It's misplaced. I haven't seen it in weeks. So it's here somewhere. Anyway. Yeah, I have the small RKO copper. Like Spider Co. Um, Okay, I'm going to do some quick unboxings here. Pronto. Okay. Uh, I was going to mention this real quick. Well, let's see. Uh, the pink theme. Uh, proper image. Pink scissors, pink knife. Pink cutting board. So there's that. No, uh, I was just mentioning this to somebody that a great form of exercise that can be done in a relatively small space that doesn't feel like exercise, uh, but you work up a sweat extremely quickly, is just to uh, volley back and forth with uh, with um, these shuttlecocks, uh, which we call badminton. Um, Uh, this is really cool because you can play it on the beach. I've never seen something like this. It's got that sort of um, uh, spandex material. This is like that nylon webbing, um, some grips there. It's got the giant shuttlecock and then the small shuttlecock. Uh, you know, it's like Ross for seven bucks. So I guess I'm going to be, oh, wait, no. Unboxing knife. Let's see. Hey, Ian. 
is the primary use defensive carry. Okay, you're asking about the Tops Microhawk and um, hey, Shuttlecock. <laughs> Great word, I know, right? Um, okay, so uh, this was designed by a Alaskan bush pilot. He wanted to have a one tool. Um, of course, it's 1095, it's Tops. Tops has, um, as far as I can tell, a legendary heat treat on their 1095. Uh, and so they have this uh, bead blast um, coating. I don't know if it's, um, whatchamacallit, the uh, uh, Cerakote or not or whatever. But um, it's convex grind. So really, it's for it's a it's meant to be a, a one a one tool survival hawk slash knife. Now we went through that period of everyone wanting a one one knife thing, you know. So we wanted you know like a good bushcraft survival slash tactical. Um, it's meant for all of the above. It's it's a survival knife, so it's got to do a little bit of all. So. I, he, he sharpened the top in this way to replace the knife, and it had to be small enough to fit basically on his waist, sitting in a small, you know, bush plane like they have in Alaska. Uh, most of the year, the, the only way to get around from place to place is by bush pilot. And, um, wow, shuttlecock, shuttlecock, bush, I mean, we've got an interesting show today. Um, so... Um, uh, it's meant to be his one tool that he carries. And also, uh, you know, it the weight was an issue because on a small plane, you know, you got to count every pound. And so that, I think that's what all the weight relief is for. Uh, presumably, these holes could be also used for lashing. So I think it's meant to be all of the above. Um, it's I don't know that it's specifically meant to be a self-defense thing, but it clearly is meant... It clearly can be used that way, which is not saying much. I mean, just about, uh, you know, a screwdriver can be used for self-defense. So, uh. I am so good, Alex. <laughs> hey, Gundogs. Uh, I am so okay. Used like a Ulu. Yeah, I mean, you can use it like an Ulu, like this, but if you do it this way, I mean, you can kind of use it as a knife. It still has a point, and it's done like a belly. It's I don't know that it's perfectly the same as as a ulu would, so I don't know that part. If anything, that's more of an ulu, you know, a mini ulu. But yeah, I mean, it's kind of just meant to be the um, the belly on a on a on a drop point, you know, or or, or not even a drop point, just you know, just a belly on a knife and another belly. But again, it's. It is, they are both convex edges, which is going to increase its sharpness, help with um, splitting, with you know splitting wood, for example, batoning, uh, whatever you need to do. And it's just going to give you that, you know, katanas are also convex shapes, so it's going to increase its toughness and um, decrease a little bit on just pure slicing this, of course. But that, you know, it would work great for, for, for self-defense, I, I, I assume. Thanks. Thanks for joining us, Ian. Okay. And I can definitely see building a shelter with it. Yeah. I, I mean, I live in Hollywood. We're not, I don't think we're allowed to even chop. No, I know we're not allowed to chop down trees, uh, but we can't even process downed trees because, you know, downed trees and dead trees are an important part of the ecosystem. So if we want to make a fire, a campfire, we have to buy wood from the store. Go figure, isn't that? I don't know. It's kind of funny. It just, it just seems very, very urban. Um, anyway, uh, so that screwed up that front flip. Here's, oh, here's the um, unboxing knife, the Frank Frazetta Boker Excalibur. Oh wow, that is a. That is a zip tie from hell. It's very flexible. Makes it harder. That's interesting. Okay, so it's, you know it's got that typical foam thing. It's this feels like PVC. Uh, but let's see how 
how well it works with the uh, shuttlecocks. And this is a foam. I don't. I mean, I, we, when, when I used to play badminton as a kid, uh, it was rubber, not this foam. But at the same time, we had your regular. Um, it's a peteca. Okay. Peteca. Oh my God. Okay, Ian, you definitely know me, man. You crazy, man. You crazy. You oh, crazy. <laughs> oh, wow. That's very bouncy. Oh, yeah. So let's see. Okay, I'm terrible. Um, no, I'm, I'm a disgrace to my to my Asian badminton prowess. Oh. Okay, well, I'm gonna need a little bit more space to pull that off. So let's see. Anyway, uh, I mentioned this because uh, this is for people who absolutely hate exercise working out this is an easy way you just the the game you play basically is you and a friend or a roommate or a partner or whatever basically you just go outside and say hey you know right around dusk when it's not too hot as long as you don't have mosquitoes and you just see what count you can get to you set a goal so we start off with uh we'll quit when we hit you know six in a row or something uh and you boom 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 it'll take about you know 20 minutes 30 minutes then, you know, 10 and then 15 and then 20. You know, you'll get up to like 30 some eventually. And you you get a sweat going real quick because of that, that thought, you know, that darting and the, and the jumping and the lunging. And you it's a whole body workout. So for people who need to figure out a way to trick themselves into exercising, this is this works. I certainly do, because to me, exercising has always been associated with, um, you know, with uh, making weight you know, matches, you know, getting on fighting weight. And it just, I, I just have so many bad associations with, uh, with exercising that I just, I absolutely hate it. I'm lazy as fuck, whatever. I mean, anyway, all of the above. Um, so there's that. And then I got, Oh, I got this thing. Throwing this out there. I don't know how I'm a side sleeper and no, it's not the healthiest way to, to sleep. Okay, um, you should sleep on your back, but I'm a side sleeper. I just am, and so I got one of those those leg pillows, right? And I've never seen this shape before. Usually they're in that, but I think this might be design 2.0, as you you know, because your crotch would be here, and then so this might be the better way to design leg pillows. I've been wanting to get a leg pillow now for forever. Uh, to put it between, you know, kind of thighs, legs. It, I don't know how people lay on their side without it. I always stuff just a, a beat up pillow down there. So anyway, there's that. And for the channel, I went ahead and got this Reverb Pro. Uh, it's uh, you know a podcast, um, and it plugs into USB. So hopefully this will turn out to be okay. It was on, you know, it's a Marshalls for 20 bucks. Um, and then I got this. I got the, uh, it's a hey, uh, live stream kit, 12 LED. It's, uh, you know, it's on the clip. So maybe, cause I know the production value on these is horrifically bad. I know. Um, I'm not saying this is gonna solve any of those problems, but Maybe I can come up with a little bit better angles and really just start doing some tabletop reviews as well, which is what I meant, what I really mean to do. Um, fit belt. So again, these these kinds of things. And I've showed what I do with these. A, yeah, you can use it as a regular like EDC pouch, but I also stuff tennis balls in here to create lumbar uh, massagers. So that's why I get these things now. You know, of course, I had to get camo because I'm tactical. Um, oh, and then uh, I got myself a tablet sleeve. Okay, so I have a new tablet now, so an iPad. So this works like this. 
Não dá para ver. Maravilha. Ah, legal. Uh, I kind of wanted to just get one of those regular sleeves, like the, the ones that fold open. But I, I think this might actually give better protection because it's more spongy and springy and such. So what's the brand of that? Kids would love to play that with dad peeling away from their iPad. Absolutely, Ian, I'm telling you. You're probably of that generation where, you know, I wasn't a lot like after I watched a couple of Saturday uh, afternoon cartoons, my parents would just get sick of our ass and be and just physically turn off the TV and be like, get your ass outside. And, and they didn't even have to do that. Most of the time we just as soon as I woke up, I'd run outside, you know, and just play outside all day long. Uh, feel the dirt under under our toes, as they say. Right. So the brand is. And I mean, you know, I got it at the local Marshalls Ross uh, for dirt cheap. What did I do with the cardboard? Oh, here it is. It's called Jumbo Badminton. Oh, that's the other thing, too, is regular badminton. You know, obviously, there's way more spring. Uh, it's, you know, the metal thing and the head smaller. With a big old thing like this, A, this is totally beach friendly. And B, you know, especially with the jumbo size, that's going to make... We're not professionals. We're not trying to make it harder. We're trying to make it easier, make it more fun, not harder. We're not Olympians, right? So the um, the, uh, the the company is Playtech Inc. And they have a website here, um, made, made in China. Go figure. It's a New York company, looks like. Playtechtoys.com. Tech is T-E-K. So uh, choking hazard. So if you're three years old... Uh, if you're three years old, don't swallow that because there's a choking hazard. You're a really big three-year-old. Um, <laughs> anyway, three plus because, you know, you don't want a three-year-old's uh, deep-throating the shuttlecock. <laughs> so three-year-olds, don't deep-throat your shuttlecock. Okay. Um trem tão grande assim. Deve ser é, difícil é, é, demais é, é, manusear. É mais fácil. Eu não acho. Eu tinha que ser mediano, tinha que ser um pouco menor só. Porque pequenininho demais também, ó. My Como é que é o nome de, desse I, jogo? I, I have one of those uh, made in France with a free Duke de Patch from Atlanta ah, Classic. Tá um, we played with rocks and sticks in the yard. I, hey, I, I would take sticks and that would turn into a uh, a um, uh, a, 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 a gun, you know. And uh, we had slingshots. Uh, the wrist rocket had come out at that point already by whatever crossman. And yeah, little rocks, and we cause hell. I mean, we are little terrorists for sure. Yeah, and you're giving me a couple of laughs for the uh, the three year olds deep throating. That's that should not be allowed. That I, I should. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna burn in hell for joking about three-year-olds uh, deep-throating shuttlecocks. That's just. That's not funny. Why I make jokes like that? I think I have Tourette's. I think I. I have mild case of Tourette's. Tourette's is called uh, uh, that. That that thing they do is called echolalia. It's uh, a compulsion to curse and say taboo things. I think I slightly have that because when I get nervous, I'll just say something really, really inappropriate, socially inappropriate. Um, uh, but it's a compulsion. And, uh, Alex. I see you too, Alex. <laughs> I see, I see. I see, can I? Cadê a moça? Saca, saca, saca. <laughs> and Alex, this is for Alex. Uh, is this the black duk duk? So there it says there. Uh, Model de pose. Uh, that's the duk duk. Okay. The duk duk is a mythical beast, a monster. Um, and this, uh, the duk duk originates from the uh, uh, North North Africa, the French French Algeria, 
uh, for, uh, Algeria used to be a part of France. Um, it wasn't just a colony they had. It was an official part of actual France. Um, it was more than a colony. And, you know, they had like arrondissement and all that. I mean, it was a, that's why the, the, the French Algeria war was such a bitter war because, you know, Camus was born in Algeria. Um, Derrida was born. I mean, some of France's greatest literary and philosophical minds were born in Algeria. So, you know, France really did see Algeria as part of itself. They did colonize it. Don't get me wrong. I'm not justifying the French. But the, and not to mention that the French Foreign Legion is headquartered in Algeria. They are not headquartered in continental France. Um, and so um, uh, they have an arrangement to this day with the government of Algeria to do the trainings for the French Foreign Legion, their boot camp still takes place in Algeria, but they did have to move their headquarters out of Algeria. But the French, the legendary French Foreign Legion um, was founded in, in Algeria. Um, that's why they have the characteristic flaps on their back of their uh, caps to keep the sun off their neck. So there's the Duke Duke, and this was adopted by them, uh, you know, as kind of, you know, it's kind of like, you know, when you're a badass, you adopt a a, a badass type thing, and 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 the spring is absolutely brutal. It's got a really nice half stop. I, I mean, it's it's one piece of stamped uh, steel. So there, you see the Duke Duke. Can you see that? Okay, no evangelical song. Sorry, lady. Uh, so there it is. I, is this the Duke Duke he got, or maybe you know what? Maybe he got the black blade. Um, I've actually not really seen this black before, which is why I like this one. Um, I don't know how common that is. And the Duke Duke does have to be made in France. Um, there is only one Duke Duke maker for it to be an official one, you know, so you don't want to order a, you know, you want to get it from a reputable dealer because otherwise you'll end up uh, getting a, a fake Chinese knockoff, which obviously this is pretty easy to make. This is, you know, 20, 30 bucks. Hey, monster. Monster? Hello, my friend. Yeah, high carbon steel, hilarity and history lesson. I'm glad I joined. Great. Thanks for joining. Uh, every episode has commentary, history, politics, you, you name it. It's, it's, I'm, I'm that way. Hey, monster. Okay. Okay, and uh, I can just continue unboxing some stuff if you would like. Uh, I don't know. This is my new iPad thing. Again, it was only eight bucks at Marshalls, and I, I really like the quality. To be honest, I, again, I wanted to get those magnetic ones where the flap covers over and it creates a stand. Um, I'm all. But in the end, I went ahead and went with this because a, it's dirt cheap, and uh, uh, it's more aesthetically pleasing. I mean, everyone's got the the one where it fits flush, and then it, you know, it's got the flap and it flaps over. I feel like this is way more. I mean, it's very thick, and it's got the nice inside. So. Um, Amor, isso não vem com iPod dentro, é? O quê? Ou você compra separado? Isso vem com iPod dentro? O iPad? Sim, my iPad. Olha. Gente. Quanto é que custa um trem desse aí nos Estados Unidos? Não entendo o quê? Quanto que custa um negócio desse aí? And then, I'm all while the live stream is on. Cool, thanks. Uh, I usually get them after they are done. I know it's so annoying. YouTube is such a train wreck. Ah, what does it cost? Why, why, Alguém me dá. Quem te deu? 
It's neoprene, made of expanding, expandable neoprene. You can hold it all without weighing you down or bouncing around. So, um, I, like I said, I put tennis balls inside of here um, and use it as a really fantastic lumbar massage because it's, it's just perfect. I, and I've showed that on other videos. I could show that right now if you're interested. 80% uh, of all American adults at one point in their life develop back problems. So it's, I just got an MRI and an x-ray today, which is why I'm like haggard and tired. And I mean, I've just been running around town all day. I left this morning and had to run errands and then, you know, had to get over there in the afternoon. Um, so yeah, it's been a hectic day. Is there anything else to unbox? I mean, I can unbox the knife if you guys want. Or the saw. Or I can unbox this stuff. I guess I can unbox this stuff. And is there anything that you guys want to ask? Um, I'm really trying to beef up, like, I'd like to do film reviews. I'd like to do, um, you know, history, philosophy, politics. Um, you know, I'm, I definitely am full of fun facts. I mean, if anyone has any, any deep questions that they've always wondered, like, hey, you know, what? Like, for example, you know, are you like, what's the deal with these flat earthers? Is, that, is there anything to that? Or, you know, was the, was the moon landing really hoax? Was it really a, a hoax? Or was it fake? Blah, blah, blah. I mean, if anyone has any kind of big picture questions, you know, and you want a more reliable source than some of the ones that have really gained a lot of suspicion on our part, I feel like, um, have not exactly endeared themselves to be uh, trustworthy. Well, worse than that, they've grotesquely exposed the fact that they are, I just corrupt and, and you know there's just basically one big corporate news machinery um, I mean even medicines become that I mean let's take a look at medicine I mean I don't want to be one of these people who are like don't listen to your doctor because that's that's even more naive uh, you got to at least talk to your doctor at the very least and then go from there um, so um, oops Let's get her back on. It's always fun to watch. Oh, thanks. Okay, hold on. Uh, let me post this up here. Uh, any crazy shit happening in the Hollywood lately? Yeah. Uh, what happened? Um, Trying to think, something just. Uh, hopefully, I, it'll come to me. Um, I do know that. Uh, I mean, just just last night, there was like a helicopter. Just, I mean, there's, there's this police helicopter just posted. Whenever they stop doing their rounds, you know something's up. I, I remember there was just a block away one time a couple of years ago. <laughs> there was this helicopter circling. They were obviously after some guy. There was a shooting in my garage, but two years ago, and. Um, some guy with an AR with a stun gun on it shot some guy in the building next door. Anyway, um, uh, I remember one time that it was circling and the circles got tighter and tighter and tighter eventually. Like they had the spotlight <laughs> eventually from the helicopter. Like, look, guy, we can see you behind the dumpster. You just want to come out. <laughs> it was just like, just like, ah, oh, crackheads. Okay. What's your take on Sasquatch? Okay, so uh, Sasquatch, I mean, hopefully we're getting serious questions, guys, because um, I don't want to play around. But 
Sasquatch uh, goes into the field called cryptozoology. Um, at the very least, what we can say is that there are authentic and verifiable true uh, Sasquatch um, um, evidence in that there are certain kinds of hairs and certain kinds of um, uh, uh, foot footprints that are that are canonical at any rate. Um, they, uh, you know, the idea of a North American ape. Um, and, you know, some of the the theories as to why they haven't been discovered. Um, you know, we don't have fossil evidence. We don't have you know bones and this and that. You know, um, humans burn their dead for you know for for millennia. So if someone were like, well, what are these humans? You know, do they truly exist? They're always hiding. You know, again, if you're an intelligent ape, you know how to hide and get the hell out of the way. I mean, um, let's take, for example, the fact that um, uh, we didn't know about the existence of almost four, you know, almost half of our human genome. We didn't realize there are five established, five homo sapien species right so we already knew about homo sapien sapien which is us homo sapien neanderthalus um and they've one of the ones they discovered was homo sapien floriensis because on the island of Flores, which is a very very primitive and isolated island in uh papua new guinea which papua new guinea is one of the most isolated primitive places um, you know, again, one of the places that still, whether they want to admit it or not, let's face it, they still struggle with issues of uh, cannibalism. They have tribes that literally live in the next door village that have languages that aren't even in the same fucking language family. It's the most ling linguistically diverse place on earth. Um, but on the island of Flores, they found that there's this mysterious percentage of our genome that they couldn't identify. And they found that it was as high as 7% on the island of Flores. And that's when they realized there was yet another human species. Uh, Flor so Homo sapien floriensis. And uh, anyway, I don't remember the other, uh, that's three. Anyway, there's two more. Um, uh, so again, is Sasquatch a one of the human species? Uh, uh, and, you know, do they burn their dead? Do they maybe bury their dead? Um, there are some very, very compelling Sasquatch stories. Now, some of the most famous ones we know were hoaxed. You know, the most famous film footage we know was hoaxed. Um, that, you know, deathbed, uh, deathbed uh, confessions. Um, so it's it's a tough call. Others are very interesting and you're very knowledgeable. Thanks, thanks. Yeah, I mean, that's why I kind of want to head more in that direction because I think I would be uh, a, a, a pretty unique voice because nobody, I mean, pretty much nobody uh, from any kind of uh, the academy, you know, from, from academic rigorous places would are, are touch this stuff, A. B, the, the literally the few individuals, not even a per, not even a percentage, you know, the point zero 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 one percent of serious academics, etc., people who come from a rigorous background, um, even if they did touch on any of this stuff, would never risk their 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 reputation and career uh, opening their mouth about such things. You know, um, again, I can tell you about um, ghosts. You know, I lived in a haunted house with a left-handed ghost. Um, I saw a ghost on a regular basis at the hotel, the famously, uh, the famously haunted uh, house that uh, uh, haunted hotel up in San Jose uh, with the haunted saloon. Um, anyway, um, I've seen a UFO that that traveled by um, quantum drives. And now recently, a few months ago, the Navy uh, admitted that uh, they have patents out on the on quantum drives. Um, so a quantum drive. Uh, a way quantum tr quantum travel would work like okay so so space time is a fabric right so imagine okay here I'll use this bandana so this is space time okay imagine this is pulled flat okay so this is space time it's pulled flat okay and let me find a 
ball. Do I have a ball? I do have a ball somewhere. Um, I know I have one somewhere, but I'm not. I wasn't prepared to talk about freaking quantum travel for God's sakes, you guys. So um, imagine there's a marble here, right? Okay, here. This is one of our mascots, glow in the dark, glow in the dark. Oh, it's a monkey. I thought it was a bear. <laughs> Okay, so for those who've been watching this channel, you know that I'm into glow in the dark. Okay, I'm into glow in the dark and pink. This is the symbol of our pink and glow in the dark. This is like the greatest find ever. It both glows in the dark and it's pink. So, anyway, uh, what a find, huh? Again, uh, Six dollars at Ross. Uh, okay, so for quantum travel, so so there's okay, so so space time is a fabric, right? It's like a matrix, and if you can see that, see how this thing has mass, right? So let's imagine this little glow in the dark monkey is the Earth. Because of its mass, you'll see it form a depression in the fabric of space-time, right? Okay, now the object that I saw flying did this kind of motion. It, it, it went, it went, it was on the horizon. It went whoop, like this, and whoop, like this, like this. It did this several times, stopped on a dime, stopped on a dime, stopped on a dime, and then took off at a right angle. I mean, and they just disappeared in, in, into, you know, into space within I mean, seconds. So we're talking to move that fast in the horizon, in, in, in the sky, and we're talking what? Thousands of miles per hour, tens of thousands of miles per hour. Plus the other thing is, is we, we talk about acceleration. It should go like this, right? But it was instant movement. It, 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 there was no acceleration period, right? It wasn't zero to 60. It was 60, 60, 60 as it were, right? And, it, and then furthermore, it would stop on a dime. Now, in Newtonian physics, if something accelerated that fast, stopped on a dime, it would be torn apart because of inertia, right? A body in motion tends to stay in motion, right? So in our physics, we can't do that, right? Like when a plane, you know, a plane or a car, they have to, if they have to change direction or stop, they got to do it in a loop, you know, which is exponential, right? Because Newtonian physics is exponential. Force equals mass times acceleration. Acceleration is is a squared thing like e equals mc squared right that's newtonian right that's our world um but now with space time if you had some sort of mechanism that could tremendously increase the mass of the object you could bend space time around the object so that the object itself is not moving Therefore, there's no friction. There's no inertia to, to tear it apart. So it can stop on a dime. If you put in the coordinates, it'll just go from this coordinate to this coordinate, right? Go back and forth, be able to stop on a dime, et cetera, because it's not moving. Space, you're moving space time around the object. Does that make sense? So, you know, is this alien technology? Is it secret classified government technology is it is it us from the future traveling in time going backwards with our advanced technology again nobody serious is talking about such things um i have some pretty crazy paranormal experiences i'd love to see that if you want to talk about that maybe you can come on as a guest sometime uh love anything paranormal and talking discussion listening to talking about the possibility of aliens yeah hey it's, it's big oh here's big knife I had a lot of parents because my old apartment. Yeah, see, uh, especially if it's probably in an old building, you know. Hey, all right. So yeah, um, so that's how the quantum drives I think would work. I, I, if I'm wrong, correct, correct me in the comments. Uh, but I, as I understand it, that's how it would work. Look, quantum computers are here. I mean, we've had them already for a long time, but it's made the news recently. They've, you know, they're considerably they're being put into use quantum computers work by so in the quantum realm um so all computers work by binary it's either zero or one 
quantum computers in the quantum realm, it's both zero and one at the same time. So certain algorithms that today would take the entire computing, um, the, the entire computing capacity of the world, 10,000 years to run an algorithm, a quantum computer can do it in a few hours. Okay, they can do massive, ludicrous amounts of... Um, I was not expecting this conversation. Very pleasantly surprised, beyond interesting. Great, thanks. Yeah, again, nobody serious is talking about this stuff. So you have a bunch of kooks and, um, and, and touchy-feely hippies that talk about this stuff. Not in an even moderately um, rigorous way. So you just... Even if you're not a professional, you already know. Don't take this serious, you know. Uh, but uh, it's been a huge revelation. The Navy came out with those three videos of, they said, um, um, you know, these are legitimate UFOs. Uh, we don't know what they are. In World War II, that's what they called Foo Fighters. Foo Fighters were UFOs. They come back and they say, hey, saw some Foo Fighters today. It was a bright light. It followed me for a while and then just took off and disappeared. Uh, and, you know, these things would travel in incredible speeds and et cetera. So, you know, mo the, uh, you know, a huge percentage of, of pilots have seen Foo Fighters, UFOs. Most of them refuse to admit it because of the reputation. Um, if you guys want to Google on YouTube, uh, look up Obama's pilot. Obama's pilot came out after he retired and talked about his UFO experience and the reporter asked him as well, like, why do you think more pilots, you know, uh, he said, Hey, you know, most, most of us pilots have seen stuff like this. I've seen unexplained things. And he says, why do you think more pilots don't come out and say, it? he's like, they don't want to risk a reputation. You know, they don't want, they want to keep their job. They want to keep their career. They want to maintain their, their, um, their reputation. So anyway, I mean, like I said, this is open-ended. If you have, questions about you know hey how do i trust my sources you know i can a huge huge wide range of stuff that i can speak on obviously i'm not going to speak on something I, I simply cannot um okay oh so let's get back to this so this is the led light this is um the phone Amor, você tem que você tem que mandar um desse para mim aqui para o estúdio. Fica bom para gravar vídeos para fazer antes e depois. Então... Talvez. Talvez. Ah, deixa eu ver, deixa eu ver. Uh, so hopefully ah. this might help. I know that the lighting is horrid, guys. So I was hoping this might solve some of those problems. Um, oh, hey, there we go. So does that make it? Is that is that better? Hold on. Ai, olha como é bom. Is that is that much better? I don't know. Is it? Tell me in the comments if that helps. Okay, I never knew that about Obama's pilot. I think a lot of them don't come out or talk about it because they're afraid society will say think they're crazy. Exactly. I mean, aside from the professional backlash, just people are like, oh, look at that guy. You know, he's a kook, you know? And again, uh, you know, I also wanted to protect my reputation. You know, I once had aspirations for academia and I was also very careful about such things, but I also went to a super kooky left wing um, uh, uh, graduate institute in uh, San Francisco called the uh, California Institute of Integral Studies. I'll put that up here. I mean, it's probably the only accredited institution that teaches uh, astrology. California Institute 
of integral. I don't know if I can't read that. My glasses are not studied. That was um, where I went to school. Um, they teach astronomy, astrology, not astronomy. Um, I would say it helps them for sure. I'm not sure what you mean. Helps who? Oh, 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 the light. Yeah. D d not so much about helping is do you see better can you see a lot better is the lighting much better because i know that the lighting has been uh, disastrously bad um uh, on my live stream i mean from just for me, me myself it makes a huge difference i can see so much better now so let me see what else there is to unbox um all right let me make some quick commentary like so this thing here is this cheap little Bud K thing, right? That, you know, it's got a Phillips and a, a little little nail nick uh, clip point um, and a little flashlight, carabiner, wrench thing, uh, flathead on there. I found out this is actually ripped off of, of something else, the name brand, and, you know, does anyone come out, oh, anti china you know, does anyone say that about Bud K? I mean, Bud K's been ripping off people and making stuff in China forever. Has anyone get all anti-Chinese about them? I just think that there's uh, uh, selective, selective memory or selective whatever. I don't know. Anyway, uh, oh, uh, let's see what the deal is with. Um, how long has it been? I can't. Can't read that. 40, 45 minutes. So maybe we should cut it short here. I think it's getting late. It's probably really late for you guys. What time is it here? Alexa, time. Okay, so it's so it's getting close to ten. So I'll probably cut it short too. I haven't been getting much sleep, so I'm gonna have to probably call it early. Oh, oh, oh. Vem pra casa, amor. Amor. Vai, canta. Vai, canta. Vai. Ai, agora você quer que eu cante. Você falou o dia todo que eu canto super mal. Sim, you, vai, canta, canta you merda. Side, you sai de my voice is bad. E agora você quer que eu cante? No way. Never. Okay, so now they have ring lights uh, or, or ring stands that have a mirror <laughs> for for your loved one. Okay, there's is there glare and reflection. I don't know. So, it's gold. That looks sweet. I mean, I suspect that's not authentic gold. Just a guess. Oh, not real gold. Isso é um forró. Te faço cafune. Te faço cafune. Dá pra sentir isso, eu achei. Só dá dançar um forró. So, this is what they're calling a, a uh, whatever, a shock absorber. So, you've got these elastic, like, bungee cords. So that if you knock the, you know, it'll allow for some. Otherwise, there would be tremendous uh, noise and feedback with kind of noise. Um, so, 
uh, Spitgard, or is that what it's called? Spitgard? It also, I I don't know how other people feel. I like these because I think it really reduces the sibilance a lot. I think it, I just, I'm a big believer uh, in these. I think it, it softens the sound a lot. Otherwise, you get just that harsh, harsh sibilance, which makes me crazy. It's like, ugh, it's like nails on a, nails on a chalkboard, you know? <risos> Amor, daqui a pouco você vai ter todos os instrumentos para poder fazer montar uma banda. Yes. Great, thank you. Thank you for the feedback. Uh, so... Okay, so here we go. Uh, they give you two chords. This is uh, really handy. I mean, I'm not saying this is going to be the best mic in the world. I mean, it's $20. Uh, the retail is $40. Um, but you can plug it in through your uh, your US, uh, your, what do you call this thing? The 3.1 millimeter or whatever they call it. And then they have, you know, the USB. So this is, you know, very, very, is designed specifically for, uh, for podcasting. So I don't know how good or bad the, the audio is on these videos. Um, just again, I saw, saw an opportunity for a very good deal on something that might considerably increase the production quality, which I, I admit is so hideously bad. And I'm not going to do editing. Well, never say never, but you know, I don't still don't want to do any editing or anything like that, but you know, I don't want to put too much work into this. I'm just too busy for that. But these are things that don't take any extra effort on my part. I mean, literally don't take any extra effort. Um, this is metal, so that's pretty sturdy. Well, I just discovered a new awesome YouTube channel. This guy's fantastic. No, oh, please don't. I did this right. Yeah, okay. I wasn't so sure if I wanted to get this, but I am very glad I did. This is a pretty nice. It's pretty not nice. Yeah, it's much nicer than this crappy channel deserves. Huh? Can't quite figure out how to get this swivel down. There's a couple of different adjustments here. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure how that works. Oh well, I'll figure that out later. I'll read the instructions. Okay. Uh, how often do you see celebrities there? I mean. You know that there's a whole paparazzi industry, you know, so it's it, it's really a question of how often do you go look, you know, if you go look, you'll see at least one a day, if not more. Um, uh, and there's also minor celebrities, you know, people who who work in the industry who, you know, to some is a celebrity. You know, I have friends who are on camera, you know, my friend's wife is is a. Uh, I was on a new TV show, and you know, it's not uncommon here. I mean, pretty much most of the people work in the industry to some extent. There we go. Oh Did my that God. hijack my mind? Setting up a device. We're setting up first. Seu áudio ficou super baixo. Fala perto do microfone. How's that? Is that better? Isso, mais perto. How about that? Is that better? Não, é. Só dá para escutar sua voz. Bluetooth, 
add Bluetooth or other devices. Show notification. I can switch to air. I, I don't know how this works. Device is ready. Can you guys hear me? Pode me, pode me escutar? Eu te escuto. Can't hear you. A lot of YouTubers there. Too. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, exactly, monster. Uh, uh, there's a gang. In fact, one of my neighbors downstairs. He moved out because he was a tall, good-looking fitness guy, and he had a YouTube channel, and he blew up, and so he moved on to bed. It's a shitty ass old building. Um, and so, hey, he made a bunch of money. He moved on to bed, to greener pastures, you know. Um, yeah, you'll definitely see uh, a lot of uh, YouTubers around. You know, when you see é, o volume like, tá baixo. this woman, which there's a lot of, you're like, eh, probably an Instagrammer, or YouTuber. You know, a lot of these girls with these uh, with these um, butt implants. You know, you know the, the the Kardashianification. Um, uh, a friend of mine lived in the back house of uh, what's her name? The girl that was married to Tony, the basketball player. The girl from Desperate Housewives. Blanking on her name, the Latina, the short Latina. Um, we can't hear you. You're coming through clearly. Great. Volume still a little low. I'll have to figure that out. The volume comes and goes. That's not good. Okay. Deve ter algum lugar que aumente o volume. Wow. Okay. Vai, locutor. Um, <laughs> yeah, maybe I'll use this, maybe I won't. Um, we'll see. I mean, I almost feel like I should have a shotgun mic instead of a condenser mic. Because this is like, you know, this is for broadcasting. I mean, you really have to put your mouth up on it. If you get what I mean, put your mouth up on it. Okay, um, <laughs> just kidding. <risos> canta, amor, canta Não Vai se dar, amor Não, canta, vai Sacanagem Ok uh, I'm going to Probably call it here Because I've done most of the unboxings I think, I mean, I don't know Oh, wait And then there's one more little... Nossa. Pode, pode escutar a música também, ou não? não pode. Mas... Pode. pode. E tá, mas tá, muito tá baixo. Não. Muito baixo. É baixo? Tá o baixo, é... O, 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 é bom. É baixo o volume da música. Tá o baixo ou é, é bom? Baixo. Tá o baixo? É, amor. Não dá para escutar direito. So yeah, I think that's. I think I'm gonna call it. If there isn't anything else, guys, and uh, yeah, uh, comment below any big big picture questions that you have. You know, like what's the point of life, or or uh, how do we understand our you know present? How do we get into the situation? You know, what is what is the nature and function of capitalism? You know, stuff like that. <clears throat> like, is there any hope? Blah blah blah. Have a great night. Right. Thanks, thanks guys. Okay, fala ciao. Mas você não vai cantar, não, viado? Ô, oh, amor! Vai, canta! You so, you so dick of the galaxy. Yeah. <laughs> não. So, dick the of the galaxy. Explica, you... explica isso sobre dick of the galaxy. So, Sim, é uma... fala para eles que é uma homenagem para o cara da Amazon que foi para o espaço. Space. So Jeff, Jeff Bezos is, uh, is uh, you know, how he's going into space and everything. So, e que, a, e que a, a, a espaçonave dele parecia uma, uma rola, um dick. <risos> Aí a gente apelidou Dick the of Galax. Em <risos> uh, uh, Brasil, porque Bezos está going to space, they're calling the uh, uh, rola de galáxia? De galáxia? Não, pica, pica das galáxias. Pica Big, das galáxias. Pica das galáxias. Isso. So the, dick the, the of the Galax. Dick. Não, Dick of the Galaxies. Dick of the Galaxies. Acho que é. Um, you know, yeah, Dick of the Galaxies. Uh, more. Ok, let's see. Uh, 
you need to podcast your awesome dude i appreciate that yeah you know i want to i just need to you know i need a producer you know and i'm always trying I to buy most I to podcast for I years, see my... you know? for the past 10 years i've been wanting to do a podcast you know uh i just feel like I, I mean, I missed a lot of opportunities. We've had, you know, over the past 10 years, there's been a lot of upheaval, uh, a lot of polarization, and there hasn't been many clear voices. And I, you know, I could have, I could have played a role, but I'm just not motivated. You know, I'm a paranormal talk here and you for those awesome things. I agree. Great. Uh, have a great night. Okay. Oh, you're a paranormal. <laughs> yes, I do. I do. Hey, it's not going to be as paranormal, though, you know, um, because the world itself is weird enough. And, you know, we call it paranormal. There are 38 defined paranormal um, activities or skills or whatever you call them. Uh, there's only <laughs> one single PhD ever written on it. Uh, it was written at UC Berkeley, where I went. A guy did his PhD, and they quickly shut that down. Uh, he, he's the only legitimate, um, you know, uh, accredited PhD on paranormal, um, and he did it through our PhD program that allows you to do inter interdisciplinary studies. And they shut the crap out of that. You will never see that again. They made sure that there wasn't a repeat on that because, well, there's reasons for that, I guess. And. Uh, but yeah, he defines uh, 38, I believe it was 38 different uh, paranormal uh, abilities. My question is, are they truly paranormal? Is it something that we've had all along? Um, you know, up until 10,000 years ago, humans were hunted as prey. Uh, did we have these kinds of abilities that have been dampened down a lot? Um, you know, uh, we had a more heightened sense of smell, I'm sure, at one point. Um, uh, we probably didn't need glasses, uh, you know, our ancestors, mm -hmm. right, et cetera. Um, you know, our senses have dulled. And the notion that we have five senses is just a product of the Greeks because they, they were into five things, you know, um, the five humors, et cetera, the five planets, uh, uh, you know, et cetera, the, you know, so the five senses. But we have numerous senses beyond five. For example, sense of balance, uh, the sense uh, that someone's touching you. Um, et cetera, et cetera. There's a, a whole wide range of senses that humans have. Are paranormal uh, senses, abilities, just some of those ones that we haven't been cultivating much? If you're interested, look up the uh, cult of Ramtha, R-A-M-T-H-A. -A. Uh, they teach that. That's Those are their teachings. Uh, this lady, Jay-Z Watts, is a housewife in Seattle. She has a big, you know, manor there. And when she becomes indwelled by the spirit of Ramtha, who's a 10,000-year-old ascended master, um, she, she gets bloated. Uh, she ch her bi metab metabolic processes change. When scientists tested her, they know that yogis and such can change to no more than three of their metabolic processes. She's able to change all five, never before recorded, to be able to do something like that. At any rate, all five of her metabolic processes change when she becomes indwelled by the spirit of Ramtha. And they teach basically cultivating your psychic ability. Very interesting stuff. You should check it out uh, if you're interested in, in stuff like that. Uh, once again, have we just lost that ability to cultivate those paranormal abilities um, that are just, you know, part of the human thing? That would be awesome paranormal podcasts are popular at this moment yeah yeah i can imagine but you know probably a lot of them are pretty fruity that's the problem <laughs> anyway okay uh canta e fala tchau vai não vou cantar não vai. você vai. canta você não, você que tá com o microfone na mão músicas eu não tenho nada de músicas você vai Inimiga da mãe. <risos> Filha da puta, por favor, para de ficar me chamando de idiota. Em ao vivo ainda. Surdo. Estrupício. Okay. Estrupício. <risos> bye bye. Ok, bye. Boa noite. Fala boa noite. Boa noite. Em inglês. Boa noite. Ah, good night. 
Okay, good night, guys. Good night, Tia. Bye bye. More knives coming up. Thanks.